Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. The topic is social media, how to use it to benefit your business, your career, your brand. Focus specifically, this segment is on Facebook. Our expert guest from Atlanta, Georgia, is Margaret Ross, CEO of Visible Strategies Communications and visionary founder of the Cameron Institute. Margaret is an award-winning business consultant, recognized author, regularly featured guest on America's top media channels, discussing marketing, technology, and cyberbullying prevention. You can learn more about these subjects at our website, visible-strategies.com. You can like Margaret at facebook.com slash visible strategies. Follow her on Twitter at twitter.com. Cameron, that's K-A-M-A-R-O-N underscore dot org. And she's with us on the program to help me get through the Facebook problem we're, we're looking at this year. Margaret, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Delighted to be here, Rick. I talk about Facebook, and there's so many things that are intimidating about that. And you sort of look at 2014 as a, as a beginning. Where do I begin or begin again on dealing with my Facebook account in 2014? Let's start with telling your listeners a little bit about Facebook. Um, Facebook is a social software application that helps people connect more easily with their friends and family and colleagues. They boast a billion users or members. About 30% of those are in the United States, which perhaps you think is not very many, but that makes up 70% of the U.S. adult population. So a person in business really can benefit by understanding Facebook and using it to help their business. About half of all the Facebook members check their Facebook daily. And you can, one th other thing we should remember is people didn't get their Facebook account to like us or any business or to buy from us or any business. So we have to earn their likes and we have to earn their business. But that's okay because we can. So for 2014, I noticed you could probably benefit from two wins. Rick, do you want to hear what those are? Yeah, help me, especially uh, wins and coming from an expert. You're going to charge me for this, or can we just consider it a trade-off and go forward? We'll just consider I, it a trade-off. That's wonderful. Give us a lot of great information and hope other people out there as well. So give me some quick wins for 2014. Okay. I checked out your personal Facebook page. And I did that by going to the search graph and I put in your name. And I noticed two things. One is that you qualify for a shorter, more powerful web address on Facebook. And the second thing I noticed is that your personal profile would benefit by you adding a what's known as a timeline or cover photo to your Facebook. And the steps are pretty simple and straightforward. For your personal Facebook page, I noticed that when you look up in the browser bar, it says facebook.com forward slash Rick Bratton, but then there's question marks and all kinds of other little characters following it. So that tells me that your Facebook web address would be more powerful if we could clean those up. Do you want to know the steps for cleaning well, them up? Yeah, that's interesting, and I would love to do that. How do I go about doing it? Okay, it's four steps. First, you log into your Facebook account, and once you're logged in, up in your browser bar, you type in facebook.com forward slash username, and since you are logged in, you'll have an option um, to change your settings. Look at the blue bar at the top of your Facebook page, and you'll find something that looks like a wheel or a cog. Clicking on that, it'll offer you the option to add a page. So then you click add a page, and Facebook's really pretty good to you. It's going to give you several templates already set up. All you need to do is choose your template, and then pick what kind of business page or branding page you want. They'll offer you um, local business, entertainment, a business page, a brand, if you have a band. There's several choices. You just pick the one that probably would fit you the best. Any of your listeners that are like a dentist, a local restaurant, a local store, if your goal is to have somebody come into your place of business, you definitely want that if you're a local restaurant, choose the local page. Use that template. Because when you use that template, Rick, 
the first thing Facebook's going to ask you to do is put in your name, your address, your phone, your hours, and your website. And even just having that and your name correct will bring people into your business. You really can't go wrong with that choice. I was looking at the options for you, particularly Rick, and I was thinking about your show. And it seems like the first place you might want to start would be with an entertainment page. Okay. Or you could, since you're also a public figure, you could choose the public figure um, template to begin with. But wherever you decide to start, Rick, as soon as you have it set up and remember to publish, and just like you've learned on your private page just a minute ago, when you publish, you're going to go right back and you're going to get a shorter version of the website address for your business page. Make sense? It makes perfect sense. Our guest on This Week in America is Margaret Ross, CEO of Visible Strategies Communications. Her website is visible-strategies.com. Link and get all the information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. As I'm looking at this, I see a little lock symbol next to the gear icon. What does that mean? Should I be concerned about that? What am I locking out? Ah, that is very important. Two things you should remember about that lock symbol is that's privacy. So the, there's good news and bad news about privacy on Facebook. If you are a business, and we're just talking about you setting up your first business page there to go with your personal profile, remember, everything is public. Anything that you do on that Facebook page, anyone wandering by on the web can see. Just keep that in mind, and then it's a good thing. On your personal page, that privacy is important in another way. You can control who sees your pictures, or all of your pictures, or just some of your pictures. But Facebook recently has pretty well abandoned any pretense of privacy and send out notices about that. So my guideline to everyone in the world is don't say anything, don't post anything, don't tag anything that would embarrass you 25 years from now. You know, I've often had the question and talked to others about it who have the question as well. Uh, what are the benefits of creating a specific page for uh, business as opposed to using your personal Facebook page? That's an excellent question. I know consultants particularly tend to think they'd like to use their personal page because they're comfortable with that personal page and use just that for their business. But it's missing seven key benefits. And the seven key benefits you can gain for your business and your listeners can too, Rick, is they can, having a page offers the ability to have tabs on the page. They're called tabs, they're called apps. And those are those great little boxes that give you things to do when you visit the page. Okay. And it also makes a person's business page look more like a website, so they look classier. Another benefit is you can advertise if you have a business page. That means you can advertise for your show, for your company. You can advertise for advertisers for, for your show, Rick. And you can advertise for likes if you wanted to. And you can do that if you have a business page. Also, if you have a business page, you get access to the website code to make like boxes. You know those like boxes you see everywhere, like us on Facebook, oh, yes. with a little thumb yes. up? Okay. When you have your page, one of the things you can pick from your settings is to copy and paste that code. And your business owner can send it to like their webmaster. Or they can put it on their own site if they are tech savvy so that people can like them. Another benefit is multiple administrators. It's a big job for any business owner and a person like yourself that is so busy to have to do everything themselves. But on a business page, you can give somebody else access to your business page and let them add things because you trust them or, or technology or apps if you trust them. And you do not have to give away your private Facebook login, which is important. And then another benefit is categories. And a category will make you easier to find on search engines. Another benefit is instant followers. In your personal life, you know, somebody asks to be your friend, you have to think about it for an hour and then take time to accept them as a friend or not accept them as a friend. But on business pages, if they like you, they're following you. It's just that simple. And the, my last thing I like about ben benefits of business pages, Rick, is Facebook Insights. And insights, when you click that, after you have enough followers, it'll tell you things like where the people live who like your page, how old they are, what their interests are. And if you're missing the audience you'd like to be your listeners or come to your dental office or come to your restaurant, it'll tell you some changes you can make. 
So that extra knowledge makes it worth having a page. You're listening to This Week in America. Margaret Ross, our guest on the program, CEO of Visible Strategies Communications. Information at our website on how to get in contact. Our website is very simple, visible-strategies.com. Something else you, I'm considering, and that's networking on Facebook. And first of all, is it even appropriate to use Facebook for networking? Uh, that's an interesting point. You know, I realize that when someone says business networking, Facebook is not the first social media that comes to mind. But Facebook does offer you two interesting opportunities, Rick, and for your listeners to grow their business and to reach out and make new friends and new contacts in their business. The two things are groups and other business pages. Business pages on Facebook are somewhat new. When they started, you had to be a fan of a page or a fan of a business, but you don't have to do that anymore. So once you have your business page set up, you click publish, then you can go visiting other pages. You can, and a page is another business. So in your case, you might want to visit people who you'd like to encourage to like you and, and perhaps want to be on your show. Or if your listener, you know, it has a restaurant or a local retail store or something like that, you know, they might want to um, like other businesses in their community and comment on the other businesses page or compliment the other businesses page. As a matter of fact, I have a Fort Wayne example for you. You want to hear my Fort Wayne example? Yes, please. Okay. I used the search bar on... Actually, I was on your Facebook page at the time, and I put in Fort Wayne. And what came up on, on my computer screen were businesses in the Fort Wayne area that already had a business page. And the first one on my list was the Fort Wayne Farmer's Market. And I noticed that they have 3,000 likes. That tells me that they're pretty active on their Facebook page. Then I read their status updates, the last two that they had posted for people who were visiting their page, and it said on the Fort Wayne Farmers Market Facebook page that they were going to be on local TV in Fort Wayne, and they were excited about it, and they were excited about talking about the people who are their vendors at the Farmers Market. So because social media is about conversation, not dialogue, I went to their page and I commented and I congratulated the farmer's market on being on TV, told them they were quite a coup and asked them what they were going to be talking about. Then I click submit. Within the hour, they had answered me back, opened up the door to conversation. And so I had used page to page to begin to have a new friend. I was networking on Facebook page to page. Interesting. We've got a couple of minutes left in the program, and the big question is, okay, they show you how many likes you have, and you, you want to have likes, so, and as a business, you want to have likes, and you want to use it uh, for other benefits as well. How do I go about doing that? Okay, you're right. Likes are a currency, if yes. you will, yes. on, on Facebook, yep. and everybody wants more likes. Well, the first thing you can do is get active. And by active, I mean you engage on the page. You tell them what you're doing, but you talk to them, and you ask them questions. And the second one is almost too obvious. You ask for likes. You know, please like Visible Strategies on Facebook, forward slash Visible Strategies. Please like TWIA on Facebook. Every time you talk to people, ask for them. You can offer incentives for people to like you. You can advertise for likes. Not just advertise for likes, but advertise for your page, advertise for your services. You can cross-promote. That means if you have Facebook and Twitter, go ahead and mention and link your Facebook and Twitter. And if you have YouTube, you do all of those. Cross-promote and link. You can also empower your email. This is so simple and a lot of people forget it. Think of your own personal email, Rick, when you send out email. The bottom of it, under your signature, Put the links to your social media mm, right there okay. and invite people to you know, click and link and follow and like. And then the last thing I tell other people, this is not something that you need, but I tell other people to learn to excel at listening because people will like you, retweet you if you are listening to what they said on Facebook and Twitter. Well, it's going to be an active 2014 on Facebook. I now have everything I need to know to get things going in the right direction. 
It is so confusing, and you really have all these options out there, and it's difficult to figure out how to prioritize what I need to do. Our guest on the program, and we'll have her back to talk more about social media, is Margaret Ross, the CEO of Visible Strategies Communications. You can find more information at her website, visible-strategies.com. And since we've been talking about Facebook, you can follow her on Facebook and like her on Facebook at facebook.com slash visible strategies. And you can also follow on Twitter at twitter.com slash Cameron, K-A-M-A-R-O-N underscore org. Margaret, great to have you on the program. Look forward to having you back. A wealth of information there. And we will have you back and talk more about social media and get us all going in the right direction for the new year. Oh, sounds wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.